You're going to you're going to wake up. You're, you're going to wake up in a completely different country covered in blood. You're not going to know what you did. Wake, wake up. up. Wake, wake up. 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 <laughs> and welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. That's Jordan. That's Pedro. And that's you at home. Shadow Realm Dynamic helping us form slot machine. Cocaine, not cocaine, YouTube. <laughs> cocaine. He's got two canes. Voltron. Get it right, man. It's not a reference to drugs, you naughty, naughty-minded people. Anyway, we get together each and every week to talk about the latest things going on in the world of Linux gaming accurately. I know it's a strange concept as of late, but okay, let's let's just get this out of the way real quick. <laughs> Who watched Wine Show last night? I didn't watch it last night. I watched it before the show because I knew we would probably end up talking about it. <laughs> I listened to it. I didn't go back and give it a proper rewatch. I didn't get interested in it, but I was watching our um, Discord where I was, was assuming by what was going on, like they're talking about Lutris for reasons. And then I tuned in. And I'm like, yeah, it's talking about Lutris. Oh, okay. Hmm. How about you, Jordan? Did you check it out? No, I did not because I really don't like his face. Oh, don't! don't. I, I I I got I got nothing against the guy, but like I find his face and voice very very grating, and so I don't listen to his stuff or watch his stuff unless I have to for the Come show. On man, you guys got like you Canadians need to get back together, and, like unify East Coast West Coast. <laughs> all right, all right, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. What have I been up to? Um, outside of that, I caught that, and apparently they're going to be releasing their um, video on trying to figure out how to Linux, so it's going to be fun to watch, and everyone tune into that and watch it. But I've been playing around with audio stuff, uh, a couple of things. I'm finishing up the OBS Linux Basics video. I was talking about that in the pre-pre super shows and like how far I'm dialing it back. Not too far. I'm like, you know, I don't want to go, this is a computer. I don't want to get there. This is the internet. It is a series of tubes. This is the power plug insert. Yeah. So I'm um, trying to get that basics. You know, somebody new to Linux, they want to sit down and like, how do I get this? Where's my game capture at? How do I get the audio set up? What volume levels, which a lot of people who are streaming need to pay attention to that. Um, yeah. Outside of that, got some other like uh, nice, affordable. It's not quite yet vintage, but it's on the borderline of being vintage uh, audio channel strip that fortunately uh youtubers don't know about but i mean it's a piece of uh radio equipment that you can readily find so stay tuned for that i'll uh, be dropping that out and then i suggest to everyone if you've been thinking about getting a channel strip for your live streaming setup or just recording it, it's probably the best value out there but what do you have you you got a game room don't you man I did. I, I I brought a table up from my garage that I had in there for since the beginning of the summer, uh, assembled it. Now there's a nice little game room. I put a picture of it on uh, general disarray. I also aged this week. So that was a thing. Oh, right. Do you mind if I yeah. show people a picture of it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. It is a very <laughs> green room. Yeah. So we were having a debate um, with the Amazon boxes come back and you're like, nay, it will be the uh, mugs. Mugs, coffee mugs. mugs. Yep. <laughs> Mugs, not hugs. I don't know, man. Uh, that, that's pretty dope. Uh, Pedro. Oh, yeah. You got a year older. Right. Uh, yeah. I, what did I, you I, do I, on I, your birthday? Did you do anything fun? I saw Dune oh, and okay. that was that was OK. It was it's a perfectly fine movie. I I've, I've maintained, though, that all the good shit in Dune happens in the later books. So mm. I want I want it to get to that part. Yeah. All right. That, yeah. That's my that's my <laughs> Dune review. I'll, I'll give it three cheers. How about you, Pedro? Uh, me, I guess I'll just, uh, leave a, um, I don't know, a disclaimer since next week there will be a Sandy. I will not be going to Portugal, but there will still be a Sandy because as it turns out, I kind of like watching the show when Sandy's on it. So it boils down to, that's for me. That's purely for high water. Pedro's (laughs) taking two weeks off a year, period. (laughs) (laughs) I'm taking two weekends to sleep. Yeah. (laughs) Even though he just, I'll still be here for LWDW, just, but just uh, I'll take those up. weekends to sleep. He just finished up saying he'll be watching the show while he's sleeping. So I want you to tell us <laughs> yes, more about these. I will be bugs. watching 
After no, the no. Fact. no, 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 do well, not, we, do not we, fall asleep listening to us. It is a horrible experience when you wake up. Yeah. Oh no, we, we, we're going to like put so many subliminal messages in that episode. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to wake up. You're, you're going to wake up in a completely different country covered in blood. You're not going to know what you did. Wake, wake up. Wake, 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 wake up. up. <laughs> you're going to wake up and you're going to have Keanu Reeves lying next to you. And your face is going to be taken off and put on him. And his face is going to be you're taken gonna off the Keanu on mask. And it's going to be the horse. Oh yeah, no, it's hey, don't give away the plot to Mission Impossible 2. It's the Steam Linux, Linux. Update of the week. Speaking of dates, Pedro, are you gonna take yes. me on a date? Uh no, unfortunately not. Um uh, we're both uh you know already taken. Uh, so the <laughs> up and coming Steam sales. Now they want to see like, uh, there's date on me, but they're just throwing dates at the poor guy the entire time. Uh, just stale, stale like date raisins. Date yes. on me. He's just brained. Oh yes. There's a Steamworks page that you can visit uh to see all of the um up and coming. Steam sales or any special events that they're doing. So we have the Steam Halloween sale that is currently going on. You, you've probably seen it. And if you try to uh, access Steam at some point on Wednesday, uh, it, you probably saw a lot of 503s and 502s because they were getting hammered, as is tradition. Uh, the next one up is going to be the autumn sale on November 24th and then the winter sale on December 22nd. And uh, that that last one, that last one, I am curious. It's like, how's that going to fly? <laughs> like, numbers-wise, how is that going to go in, like, game sales versus, uh, you know, reservations for the uh, the Gabe gear? I, I, I wonder I wonder what the, the green check apocalypse is going to be, because... You, you gotta, you gotta imagine. You gotta imagine. Once people start getting the hardware in their hands, they're gonna be like, "Well, I want to play some games." What the fuck, Title X? Why aren't you available on the Steam Deck? Why, why are you get? Why do you get a yellow check mark? Are you trying to imply it'd probably be a bad time to be on like Valve's tech support team during that holiday period of like? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, absolutely. Couple of things. I know I keep saying this, but I mean, this is my actual experience. Every time we get a good sale going on or a sale on Steam, I head there, which getting ready to spend some cash. I don't know anything. I mean, it's, dim- it's diminishing returns, man. It's, uh, it just seems like they're so often, but I will, I, w- I want to give Valve credit. Uh, you made a, you made Chrome very chuggy on a thread ripper, but that, uh, Halloween sale page, you got a lot going on on that one. So, I guess that, uh, here's one thing though. I got reminded of a game that I owned that I just never played. So I had that benefit. Hmm. Yeah, that was new. I, I mean, I, now, oh, I guess I should say it like this though. This makes it for a better story is, uh, I saw that, uh, Guacamelee 2. Hmm. I'm like, oh, right. We had the Linux version. Two never came. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Why don't I just pick it up and I'll play it uh Friday and I'll do that. And, Mentally, that first thought was like, not even to check Proton DB or anything. I'm like, of course, it'll just work. I don't, you know. Well, the, the the first one was FNA, right? Like, I don't remember. But to me, that was like the first time that I thought, you know what? It's just going to work. I'm not going to have to mess around with it. I can just pick it up. Fortunately, my brain stopped. And he's like, you probably got like nine copies of that on Humble, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> So I went and did it, but yeah, it turns out, yeah, it just works out of the box. So yeah, all the dates, but something that's always been a problem, problem to the point where I have a dedicated tablet because you can only install that damn thing, uh, the Steam two-factor authenticator, authenticator yeah. on one device at a time. So it just sits on this yep. desk over here for that sole purpose <laughs> of like, boop, okay, swipe down. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. So you, you, you might be familiar with our good buddy, Pavel, who runs SteamDB. Uh, he's always rooting around through updates and depots and whatnot. And he found something rooting around. Uh, looks like they're going to be adding a new authentication mechanism to the Steam client for the deck. Uh, QR code login. You might remember it from Discord, where you can just use your mobile client and take a picture of a QR code and it will log you in, which is real handy. And um, it'll probably make setting up your deck a lot easier because you don't have to use the on-screen keyboard to type in your password and shit. Um yeah, uh, this 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 is good. Um, authentication has always been a big pain in the ass for Steam. Yeah, because either either you you disable Steam Guard on your phone, and then you gotta wait 
three weeks to trade your TF2 hats or you're, you're locked to this one device and heaven help you if you fucking lose it. Cause otherwise you're, you're fucking screwed. Oh man. It's like nuclear launch codes, especially when I was moving uh, the authenticator from one device to another. Cause I was like, are you sure you wanted it? It's like, please let me yeah. back in. Don't make me have to fight. Turn, turn both keys at the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Um, you know, if they do that, I will buy a, um, just a cheap mobile because I, I, I don't care on a mobile. Just I, I, I have tablets. I'll, I'll buy something cheap off eBay with a camera on it so I can go boop. All right, done. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, good. No. A part of me is kind of dreading. It's like, oh, Valve is going to be releasing an update for the Steam Android app. Oh, goody. I remember the last time that happened. Wouldn't start for me for like two days. So, mm. yeah. Never had that problem. No. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, no, the the last one, which was when they did the big, uh, I was about to say, I, to I've only, ha- I've only had the, uh, authenticator <laughs> app installed for four years. So I've never seen an update. And so, yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this was before that. Right. <laughs> Although it's, it's also one of those things where it's very possible that the app could have broken for extended periods of time. But the only time I ever bust that fucker open is shut up. The only time I ever bust that fucker open uh, is is because I need to log into Steam, right? So, like, how, right. how often do you need to do that? I would I, I would not know if the app was broken for prolonged periods of time. So we got good news, everyone. <laughs> you could now play favorite, the best game ever made, Duke Nukem Jump Forever oh. on Linux. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say dive kick. <laughs> nope. Together with the newest Proton Experimental tonight. This was last night. So you can currently go play with it right now if you have the... Latest Steam Client Beta, uh, you have initial support for KEG, C-E-G, DRM. That's right. Steam's got its own DRM. You might not know about that, but now, physician, heal thyself. That's great. That DRM can run through Proton. Unblocking mini games. Apparently, there were 13 games that used this. With my little bit of research, uh, some affected titles are mentioned, and there's a GitHub repo that you can bounce over to and go check out. Which I did. I, I saw it like, okay, people are reporting it. Uh, my first experience with this was Duke Nukem Forever. Oh, that'll be fun. And that was immediately met by like fail to the king, baby. It was, it was sad. It's like, ah. But then I, I, th- I think Foxdog got it running. He was, he was fucking around. what with I that. did. And Protonics, I cut it off and cut it back on again and it started. So what, there's a win. What, ah. what, one thing that you're going to notice is that you'll get like a little terminal window when it's doing a thing with these games. The two that I tried. Because the second one, the second one made me very happy because um, a long time ago, kids, uh, we were going to get a copy, a Linux native version of Bioshock Infinite. And it turns out the fine, fine folks at Virtual Programming were the ones that made it. So it was poorly wrapped wine, which technically did work. But I was like, no, mm -mm, not I'm not going to touch it. Haven't played it. Go check my playtime on this thing. Uh, and, but I've had it this entire time. Now I can finally play it with Proton Experimental. Get the DXVK, get the Vulcan going on. It launched out of the box. No problems whatsoever. Also, hashtag RIP virtual program. I'm sure virtual program is doing, I think they're doing iOS stuff like Feral is. Oh, probably. Yes. probably. Apple I'm, and I'm, iOS stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the fact that you can finally shoot Hitler in the balls on Linux because Sniper Elite 2 runs now. Ooh. Yeah, so you, you can, he, he's got one, he's got one testicle and you can shoot it out. It's great. I was yeah. really unfamiliar <laughs> with um, the Steam DRM. Apparently that never took off, did it? I, it it's Not always really. one of those things, Valve like includes it as a value add, like, hey, you ship your game on Steam. We give you all this shit you can use. We're not. It's up to you. <laughs> How dare you talk yeah, about no, it play wasn't together like really- that? <laughs> <laughs> Our Steam sockets or, uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, it used to really not be that much of a problem before Proton, because if you were running the Steam client through Wine, you could launch a great deal of those games. And Strider, uh, when you were trying to get that working, Ven, uh, Strider just posted a screenshot of Steam running through Wine and the game just running fine without needing to do anything. But with Proton, that was a big no-no, because there's a thing with Proton and DRM and anti-cheat that makes it special. Whatever well, it is, you know, it seems you, to have hang been on, fixed. Hang on. You, you want to gloss over that? I'm, I'm pretty damn sure before you get the green light to light up something like EAC, you got to have some other shit in order. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> but yeah, it is, uh, it, it's very good to see because this was what everyone kept pointing at. It's like, okay, Valve, so you've made EAC work and uh, people behind Battle Eye went, oh, they're doing it? Okay, I guess we're doing it too. So what about your own DRM? Hey. There it is. Through a combination of Proton and the new beta, you can finally get your CEG games running, which, yeah, it's Bioshock Infinite and... but yeah, and, and yeah... <laughs> Valve looked at the list of games using their technology and went, yeah, it's not really a priority. We don't really need to worry about that mm-hmm. too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alice Madness Returns used CG, but it was implemented so lightly American that McGee's? it just worked. Uh, the second one, yes. Okay. Madness Returns. Yes. Yes. Blockchain Returns. Returns. Dude. Uh, so. <laughs> or not. This is kind of a thing, man. This is uh, something we talked about that uh, maybe a week before last that Valve was like, yo, if you got the NFT things, you're doing crypto and stuff like that, you got that component in your game, fuck right off. Um, go away. We don't we don't want you in the store. Which, you know, I mean, there was always the argument of like, what is it? What are you putting this under? Like the gambling mechanic? Because, well, you've kind of been in some problems with that, which Jordan brought up. Like maybe they're just hesitant to like have anything like that. Yeah, and any sort of secondary economy that could be used for anything illicit. Yeah, that they don't get a cut of. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. They, they, they don't want financial regulators taking a look at their books. At all. It turns out the Fight for the Future dot org, uh, which is a collection of uh, companies uh, that make games that want to put NFTs uh, stickers on your PlayStation controllers. Uh, well, they got an open letter. <laughs> they do. Um, you know, ever since they did that onboarding process, and they're like, "Yo, you just can't uh, have any applications built on blockchain technology." 26 developers, along with three other groups, have penned a letter saying, let us do this because this is like a totally brand new, like, totes legit way to extract more money out of gamer. I mean, uh, value for gamers. Yeah. Yes. Reason. <laughs> Blockchain. Ooh. What do we think about this? Uh, I mean, do we do? Do, <sighs> do I just not get? Like the, the NFT things, I personally, I don't have any disdain for them. I just think they're silly. Oh, the, the, they're, 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 they they're, they're very, they're very silly. Like they're, uh, this, this is not Linux crypto cast. So, but I, I, I will say they, they, they talk a lot about this technology being web three and having been through web 2.0, you don't want to be evoking uh, that branding with that move. Maybe, I don't know. I, I remember that wasn't received too well, uh, but I mean, Val, valve is well within their rights to deny uh, crypto technologies uh, in on their marketplace. It is their platform as, as we've learned with the uh, Epic V Apple case, yeah, if you agree to their terms, if you agree to a store's terms of service, you are bound to those terms of service. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Speaking I, of I, Epic, <laughs> they yes, kind of yes. said that they were absolutely okay with, you know, you shoving your uh, environment fucking implement up their shithole of a store. So go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of crypto just because I can't buy a new GPU now and it's solely crypto's fault. Crypto the super mutt. It's that what the one. Uh, it's shit. Like the the entire crypto scene right now, there's absolutely no redeeming qualities to it. It's shit. So yeah, put it on right. the Epic Store. It'll be right at home. I don't know, man. Like I would say with NFTs, I'm not gonna throw crypto under the bus. Uh because there's something to be said about decentralized currency, but there's also something to be said about uh the way it's currently being produced. And uh, that's what I think most people are taking issues with. But again, with mm. the NFTs, I just think they're silly. Uh, I, I understand like wanting having it on. I think the technology behind NFTs is interesting more so than what it's being used for currently. And I, yeah. I it, it really does seem like the solution in search of the problem, kind of like a snap, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh pl- god damn it Alfie. that's where you god went with it, that okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't uh, think snaps there's, are there's that a new, bad to be fair there, there's a there's a new version of uh, ge that didn't come out the day that we fucking record I this know, podcast right we actually mm-hmm. get one in i'm sure if we check our email uh proton 620 ge if you don't know what glorious egg roll proton is think of it as the fedora of um Proton versions. It's it's, uh, it's, ah, it's the meme distribution. It's, Got it. Yeah, it's the meme version of Proton. <laughs> it's the meme Proton. <laughs> couldn't couldn't possibly be used as a desktop for any uh, reason whatsoever, according to some people. But 
bunch of fixes in this, a uh, bunch of fun stuff. Now, the one that I did notice that showed up in our Discord, um, I forget who posted it, uh, the attack helicopter uh, avatar. <laughs> that person. Uh, I'm horrible with the names. Uh, but Metro Exodus now works the enhanced edition with the ray tracing and all the um, extra nonsense that just wouldn't launch under Proton will launch with this version of Proton GE. And I know for a fact it's working because I launched it with my 2060 and my 2060 was making brand new sounds wheezing and like, mm, like, oh, it's using something in there that I haven't heard going on. And it definitely spooled up and it worked. Now the aspect ratio was jacked up and honestly, it's great. I'm just not sold on ray tracing. Uh, I, I looked around. I'm like, well, hey, I mean, it's playable. I didn't pull up a, uh, a FURPS counter, but I'm like, yeah, it's 60. I was running like 1080p with uh, stuff on like medium because it's a 2060, but uh, th- th- that's neat, I guess. Uh, more rays yeah. for, day- rays uh, for uh, days, yes. I, I mean, it, if, if you bought a card with the compatible hardware, it's nice to be able to use the feature, I suppose. Um, there is there is a bit of a warning here. If you are going to be using resizable bar, um, don't use it with your external GPU. They do not play nice together. So you will need to shut that off in the BIOS. Uh, the resizable bar support, not the eGPU, if you uh, want to be using that. <laughs> so um, I, I don't, I don't know if that, if I don't know if that's like a limitation on PCI or what, um, or like the the Thunderbolt connector or I don't know. Uh, but hopefully it gets fixed. And if not, well, don't, don't use an eGPU. Yeah, it is probably something to do with the fact that you're putting your um you're trying to share system memory at a lower latency with something that's going not just over pci oh. it's going over pci via thunderbolt USB3, or usb c or yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then to the gpu it's like uh yeah no that's probably safe to disable that yes but the the big one that jumped out at me was actually the first one the b-man g drive because i've had that game on my wish list for so long because it's like the soft body physics simulator with a racing or driving focus. It's like, yes, yes. I yeah. want me some of that. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I do like that. Eggy is making sure that you can play your Nickelodeon all-stars brawl on proton because you God know damn what? I, I'm just very happy that, you know, there is a version of proton with some focus on things like ray tracing might not be my bag, but we know steam's not terribly concerned with proton tracing rays because uh, steam deck's not going to be tracing any rays anytime soon. FSR, I, I mean, right? it could. No, it it it, it, has, it, a, it has the hardware for it. Yeah, it's it's possible. Um, <laughs> you really uh, love it. Yeah, well, <laughs> when your target's like seven twenty, not with any kind of performance, yeah. but it could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, because it's, it's using the new uh, AMD architecture that has like the ray, ray tracing shit in there. No. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it couldn't technically do it. I mean, I, I can technically play a lot of games fully ray traced at UHD. It's just, Oh yeah, well, I, I mean, f- f- fully, fully <laughs> ray traced, maybe, maybe not. Right. I, I don't know. I, I wonder how well it will run Quake Two, though. We this this is the real question. Oh. So yeah. we got a couple of games to talk about, a couple of new games, and some game updates. Yes, we do. Um, for uh, Fistful of Frags, apparently. What? Uh, yeah. They- Oh, no, no, we're talking about, never mind. I fucking skipped over something entirely. Yeah, the OG Slava Cooker. There we go. Uh, <laughs> J- J- Jiro Janosik, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it is a uh, sort of isometric uh, pu- puzzle solving action adventure game uh, starring a legendary folk hero of uh, Slovakia, uh, Jiro Janosik, who eventually was apparently executed on a giant meat hook. That's that's always fun. Um, but yeah, you uh, it, it is uh, funded in part by the uh, by the government of uh, Slovakia. And yeah, it, it's the thing. It has mostly positive reviews. You can't kill the bandits, apparently, because you are quote unquote good guy. The game's descriptive text is very disappointed with the fact that you can't murder people. Aww. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I was looking at it, man. I mean, uh, for the audio listeners, I mean, it's a top down puzzle platformer type thing where you can thieve around. I mean, it, it, it's definitely Get like Slav 64 meets don't Slav together. And then, um, mm-hmm. yep, feel like a decent thing. <laughs> and when I saw when I saw this show up on Steam, I uh went to talk to our resident Slav, uh, Artherans. Like, okay, you're the first Slavic person that came to my mind. Is this historically accurate? And he's like, uh, looks like it. I mean, I don't know about the puzzles, but everything else, yep, no, that looks good. So it, it right, needs okay, more. Cool. It, it needs more Adidas tracks. Well, here's what I'm I want sorry. to throw out, man, for everybody listening. Uh, this has been tested on Ubuntu 2004 with NVIDIA GPU. 
not, not going to tell you which one. So that's for you to find. Uh, hey, <laughs> you, you know, it's better than in a v, in a, in a virtual machine, right? Like they right. tested it in mm-hmm. virtual box. I'll, <laughs> I'll give it to them. Halloween update time. Yep. Yes. Now we get to the fistful of frags and yes, they are uh, the first, the first thing that surprised me was, Oh, um, Fistful of Frags is still getting updates, huh? For the hundred and something people playing it on average every month. But uh, yeah, the 2014. Yep. And it, it's still there. It, it was a very fun game, but it got to the point where I was basically just going through an entire match against bots because there was no one else playing it. So yeah, but they're still updating it. And uh, yes, Ghost Town is back. It's just the big thing this year is the Storm of Boom, where there are four teams and uh, each team gets a bow that shoots dynamite arrows and you have to basically make do with that. And yeah, it is, it has the, the, the spoopy maps are enabled for, I think it's two weeks for the next two weeks. So if you are, if you liked Fistful of Frags, go have a poke around so at it. I think it's you safe to say fun. this is it's not necessarily an update, but more of a reminder to those hundred people like, Hey man, the maps change a little bit. <laughs> the, the, hey, uh, hey, we still exist, you dynamite guys. bow thing is new. Okay. <laughs> okay. But. I, I I witnessed you playing running with rifles and I fell asleep. Um, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so it was more like I napping played, with rifles? Kind of, yeah. I played this game uh, it, shortly after Steam came out on Linux and this was not on Steam at the time. Uh, that was the first time I played running with rifles and it ran really well. And uh, then couple of weeks ago i decided yeah well, let's do it some more because be? i, I mean really i understand like that's <laughs> supposed to be a pentagram but it looks like uh patrick from spongebob <laughs> is, this, is this the crusty crab <laughs> right <laughs> that is the uh zombie shooter mode if you have the edelweiss uh dlc uh the map for edelweiss during the halloween bits has the special um shoot zombies mode where instead of shooting uh the other soldiers in the other faction you it's like zombie survival type of situation it is apt for the time of year and they also did some changes specifically the xp that was like the big one uh there's more xp per kill you earn more xp per kill and if you have a streak the xp multiplier increases more than it used to so yes people are leveling up a lot faster now so even if you are starting the game now good luck because you saw me play it on stream i hadn't played that game in years and i was just getting murked left and right so yeah ah, these, these are the people who just play running with rifles well, i mean it's running with the rifles i mean it's top down uh follow your cursor Army top down, yeah yeah, yeah. Top, top down counter strike so yeah it's like a little green man type of shooter but yeah, it is top down tank control Z point in the direction you want to shoot. Tank situation. control Z. Yes. yes. <laughs> needs, needs more resident evil coming, <laughs> coming up next, man. Good luck trying to get a pie zero, the new pie zero because it's gone. It's, it's gone. I was going to make a joke about us being the hose and, uh, basically, uh, showing our goods uh, for your entertainment, but we can't do that um, because we do this live and Twitch has a big no-no unless you're in the uh, hot tub section, which we are most certainly not. No, no, male nipples are fine. We saw it in the leak. Male nipples are fine. So if you want to support all six (laughs) pairs of nipples here, well, two pairs and one trio of nipples, uh, you can head on over to uh, (laughs) patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Hey, I have three, man. I'm a mutant. I'm like an, I'm like the worst kind of X Man. Um, yeah, head on over hairy, Patreon.com. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Patreon.com/slash Linux Gamecast. Become a patron. You get some cool stuff. Uh, you get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch. Oh, um, hi, Gerald. Hi, Gerald. How's, how's, how's it going? <laughs> From from tubbing to us on Twitch, I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, two, two, two Geralt's one tub. I don't. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Um. Get access to our Discord channel. Get access to our show notes. Uh. Get get your name in the credits. We got some free free super shows. We threw, we threw a lot of stuff for free. Yeah. There there's there's a lot of stuff. Uh, early access to the uh, uncut 
versions of the LGC screams uh, on our, we, we got, we got a YouTube channel for that, but until uh, those get publicly listed, you can catch them. In yeah. I want to give everybody a reminder. Uh, if you want to find that, uh, check out like our little channels thing on our primary YouTube channel. There's a link to it or just search for Linux Gamecast live and uncut and all the stuff that's going up there, all of our games that we're going to be streaming during the week, full form and all that. You can watch them on Twitch if you're a sub or if you want to watch the live and uncut, like as soon as we get done with it, if you sub to us on Twitch, but Patreons get that uh, the next day. But mm -hmm. like I said, bonus soda also make it available in your custom RSS feed at patreon.com in MP3 podcast. Speaking format. of, yeah. Speaking of custom feeds, we also got the pre pre super shows and that right. extra hour of Linux gaming goodness. Why would where anyone we, be concerned about what we're up to and behind the scenes plans? Because, and because that we're spiders with game developers. No, because, spider facts, man. We got to talk about the Asian spiders that are invading Georgia right now. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> That, that, that's that's what we talk about. Uh, we we got a store store dot linuxgamecast dot com. Go buy yourself some buy apparel. Stores. Man, I wish we had like Linux Gamecast spiders you could buy that like bite people and make them blast the free software song by Jono Bacon. I don't know. That's that's my version of Spider Man. <laughs> Hire me, Marvel. What Pretty sure the... that qualifies as chemical warfare, no, but okay. Now I now I want the Marvel <laughs> or DC thing where the spider bites the Flash. Or something. No, the flash bites a spider. Then we get Spider Flash. Yeah. <laughs> Supersonic Spider. <laughs> super, super. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a Sonic the Hedgehog persona about that already. Um, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta thank some people. Uh, actually, before we do that, we gotta talk about the Amazon wish lists that we have on LinuxGameCast.com, hidden under the support menu. Uh, you can check out Ven's wish list. You can check out Pedro's list, wish list or mine. We got a bunch of stuff for our respective studios. Uh, if you send Ven some stuff. And Jill's there too, yes. Um, if you send Ven some stuff, you get your name on the shiny, flashy wall, possibly obstructed by Ven's head, possibly not. Who knows? That's that's the gamble. Ooh. <laughs> suck it. <laughs> suck it, Aldi Aldius. Yeah, suck it. You love it. Um, yeah, and if you buy some stuff off the wish list, uh, you can send us a little note that we have to read. No one sent us some stuff, so we don't get to read you funny nonsense. Yes. Uh, we got we to gotta thank Mir for- I wish other uh, people would start doing this because I would force them to like, verbally put together something that I could cut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just have like a, have like a ransom letter with all the fucking Amazon notes. It would be like that with audio clips, Ben. I, I just have a fun time with it or just do it to yeah. the same person. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. yeah. That's how we replace Pedro with like the chef method of just make love to you. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, do we, do we, do we got other shit we got to talk about? I don't, I don't think I so. Think that's pretty tight. Uh, thanks everybody for letting us do this. We are loud, live, independent. Thanks Thank to you, only to your support and uh, no mattress ads guaranteed. And uh, maybe mattress side though. Stay tuned. Except for Microsoft. 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 We will take Microsoft money, man. <laughs> Call me Redman. <laughs> uh, yeah. Call us Bethesda because we're willing to sell out to you. Oh, yeah. We got a new piece of hardware that I'm sure if you're anything like me, you immediately went to uh, watch them be out of stock. I'm talking about the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W. The W. The V. It's on sale now. It's sold out now at the price of 15 bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. No. Jungle of. What do you get? Oh, we, oh, we, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we, oh. oh, baby. This has got the uh, SOC. It's got the die of the Raspberry Pi 3. That means not one, not two, but three. Oh, can we do more no, than three? Four. Four. Oh, how much? It's, it's four. <laughs> now, now there's <laughs> what, 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 A53 <laughs> cores. Yeah. What, 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 what is this? Old AMD, AMD laptop? A little, with three cores? little bit we got to point out, though, man, because they're slightly down clock to one gigajoules, but. Um, really, here's the only problem I have. Not really a problem, but I'm like, ah, boo. I wanted, I, I want my, I wanted my giraffe to have wings on top of everything else. It only has 512 megabytes of LP DDR2 SD RAM, but you like, they got all that on one package. That's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, yeah. it's the nitty bitty thing. Everyone likes to build their own Chrome casket and yeah. And it's um, a quad core on that form factor. That's insane. I, I see this is a Linux Gamecast, so I'm very much looking forward to like all of the teeny tiny little gaming devices that are going to spring up around that specific one. But um, oh that, man, someone really insane. needs to not, yeah. not knock that coffee mug over because that's a lot of exposed circuitry. <laughs> <laughs> that's only 15 bucks, whatever. You can spill coffee on it if you can find it. 
Yeah. Well, no, no, because now now people are buying them to dunk in their coffee and eat. <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> look at it. It's got a goatee. Hmm? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, Broadcom module. So, this this is the uh, this is the SOC minus the the pinus. So yeah, yep. uh, there's a, there's a breakdown <laughs> of how they put it all together. It's pretty it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's de- definitely for that fifteen dollar ask. I'm like oh man, it's hard to say no. It's got a new charger too. It does come with a chunky charger. I think that's more of a just in case. Yeah, it, it's a two and a half amp uh, charger because well, most USB A ports don't really provide two and a half amps you're lucky yeah, to get the, more than one, one. so <laughs> yeah. yeah probably no, no. get the external was anyone else adapter. really disappointed by usb3 that they didn't increase the voltage on that and like you could actually charge it faster nah. I, 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 I remember I, being kind of cheesed by that five volts is kind of a standard and unless you're gonna go from five all the way up to 12 but then you're going to need some thick ass USB cables. <laughs> this is like the whole thing, man. Like I, I, we all have them. You have the speed USB chargers with the big ass yes. cables that are like mm-hmm. clunk, and you can just hang that device off of them. Like that'll be charged in a few minutes. Just give it a second. Mm-hmm. But yep. yeah, like when I'm plugging something in, like that PC, even like whatever. But yeah, handhelds, uh, gaming. This is going to open up some new things for me. Uh, once I get my uh, greedy little palms on. I'll probably look into like 3D printing a case for a stream deck to build a bit focused companion wireless uh, stream deck server because I currently back here in the rack have a Pi 4 doing that duty, which I logged into in the pre pre super shows. I'm like, wait, that's only using like 200 megs of RAM. All right, I think I might be able to squeeze this on here. And uh, that'll be a fun little video. And uh, yeah, uh, but here's something we brought up pandemic or no pandemic. One thing the fine, fine people at Raspberry Pi have prepared us for is waiting for a product because, you know what, I just went through the motions of making sure it was out of stock. I knew it was going to be out of stock before I got to add a fruit. And yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, like my Raspberry Pi Zero W, I did a video on where I turned one into a webcam. I waited well over a year before I even thought about ordering one. And uh, this probably going to be the same way. <laughs> Yeah, this one, I only got the Pi 4 that's in here because I went to the Raspberry Pi store here in Cambridge. So, uh, yeah. Well, that, same thing <laughs> with tell, the Pi tell 4. Evan the I Pi say 4 hi. was well over a year. <laughs> now, we got some Wayland news and some NVIDIA news. And, uh, yeah, it's all nice and stable now. We can just run Wayland yeah. and all the things. And... Oh, oh, yeah, ab- absolutely. You should absolutely go try that right now. There will be no ill effects <laughs> whatsoever. No, uh, so we talked about how a couple weeks ago uh, in the uh, last NVIDIA beta driver, they pushed out uh, the GBN backend for um, for Wayland so that um, so that you can start using X Wayland with uh, NVIDIA drivers. This uh, brings this into the stable branch. So you're not going to get too many crazy updates. This just rolls it up into uh, the non beta stuff so people can actually start developing against it. Um, Hopefully, by the time we hit driver version 500, Wayland will be a done deal and we can exist in the lovely moon future. I'm a little sad, though, because Fedora 35 is shipping a little too close to this. So hopefully, uh, once the work gets done, they'll push out the NVIDIA compatible X Wayland and not hold it off until uh, Fedora 36, because I really want to play around with it. But I don't want to have to go and build all those fucking dependencies. You see, son, this is the advantage of running Debian, man. By the time uh, Debian 12, if society is still in one piece, launches... You'll probably have it. Um, now, I did take a look, you know, because I have the drivers. I went ahead and compiled and put them on the workstation here in the studio. And uh, even the unstable ones, uh, week before last, and launched West. And I'm like, yay, look at my Wayland powers. But I didn't want to play around with the game scope. I'm like, wait a tick, I can do that now. <sighs> so I went to, uh, I pulled the get for game scope and like, oh, look, DRM's like a point version out of date. Like, I don't have an entire week to hunt down that dependency chain because that I'm sure this is waiting behind that one package. So, uh, yeah, I'm not installing Arch. I guess uh, I'll, I'll just wait. <laughs> but I, I look forward to my <laughs> new GameScopey, Steamy experiences on NVIDIA, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you're waiting for the 495 drivers on Ubuntu and you're uh, looking at the graphics drivers PPA, wondering, it's like, yo... What the hell? Uh, Don't install it on half of the packages. <laughs> half of the packages are there. The other half are still waiting and proposed, not being pushed onto the actual in-release repo. So, 
So, so I, maybe hold yeah. back those packages, Pop OS. Mm. <laughs> just, 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 then, uh, just until those are ready. I, I'm still going to roll this back, uh, and I will always repeat it anytime this comes up. People, do yourself a favor. Even if you don't use it, learn how to install, if you have an NVIDIA card, an NVIDIA driver from the run file. Because that will help you in multiple situations, especially if and when something breaks. If you're able to walk it back, like, okay, I'm at a TTY, I can log in, and I can take care of this. That will serve you so much better than constantly just, you know, hoping that everything's going to go right. (laughs) Because sometimes things don't go right. And you end up on, like, Nuvo. I'm wondering how come you can play games. (laughs) Yeah, one thing the NVIDIA run file still needs to change Drop the requirement to kill X, please. I get, I, I get why they do it because they do their big find replace thing, and that's going to absolutely break your running system if they actually do it. Um, but I really, yeah, Nvidia, please figure out a way to make driver that, installs that a needs to less change. D- do yeah, do it differently. Like put a process to run on the next reboot. Something, please remove that. I mean, we we have we have a GL dispatch, so you could theoretically just have everything target the one library and then swatch it on the back. And end supposedly, uh, Nvidia was compatible with the vendor neutral, uh, vendor neutral dispatch, uh, so that you could yeah, have the, the, say Mesa drivers and the Nvidia drivers running at the same time. Yeah, this this is the only way to make your Nvidia Optimus laptop actually you know work. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if you're waiting on Nvidia drivers on the desktop, I'm like, man, you. I, I'm. It's cool, man. I understand that you bought an AMD card, but suddenly, you know, like, you start, uh, no, you my, start my, hating yeah, on. Works. As soon as you start hating on Nvidia laptop driver, I'm like, I, understood. I wouldn't even want to take yep. over that. That's still, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah not, not good <laughs> yeah. times. Nope. Proton up, my Q2. Burn up. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking a lot about going into terminals. Maybe that's the thing you're a little too uh, new to do. You don't have the confidence. Well, lo and behold, there are many, many GUIs out there that will solve all of your functional problems for you. Like this one, Proton Up QT. Um, it's a QT GUI for handling management of your third party wine builds for uh, Proton GE, Wine GE, okay. et cetera, et cetera. That's you. Um, and yeah, um, it beats having to remember the steam dot steam steam compatibility tools dot d whatever directory you got to drop all the proton things in um yeah so it comes in a handy app image you can run it uh you can just run it out of a terminal though because it's just a python program uh but if you don't want that you can build the app image run it distribute it whatever and install your proton ge and play fucking bioshock infinite that's what i'm saying man could you just like manage your proton ge like a normal person and have like 19 versions in your comp tools taking up yeah, like yeah. 19 gigs <laughs> right yeah the, there is one thing this doesn't do which it should it absolutely should and it's going through the vdf files to see if you have uh, a specific game set to use a very old version of um proton ge uh and you want to remove that old version of proton ge just you know remove that because that's always a bit of a pain in the butt because you forget and then you remove the old version of Proton GE and then when you try to actually right click on that game to change it, Steam crashes. That also needs to be fixed, Steam. But yes, it is, uh, it's good. It, it, it's it's an app image. Just download it, make it executable and start it. There you go. Done and and done. I keep saying this, I keep saying this, but if Linux is to be adopted by the so-called Windows, power users, which we heard that a lot this week, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> it will need GUIs for all this shit. You know I, I'm not kidding. Everything needs GUIs. <laughs> maybe maybe it's just Windows power users on the west coast of Canada. <laughs> and very high up north. <laughs> yeah. I, c- I could never take the term power user seriously. If you come to me and say that you are a power user, I say, that's cool. I'm also the Green Ranger. <laughs> I got a dragon sword. Uh, well, I'm a power user. Yes, I use power to charge my phone, to here's run a, this PC. Here's a very interesting conversation. Then. Um, like, I consider myself a end user, but if I have to, like, get down to it, um, I'm a very confusing end user on Linux because, yes, I can compile code. I can apply patches. I can tinker around with the like, getter files and stuff like that, but I am not a software developer. Mm-hmm. Would I consider myself a power user? I did. Mm. 
I don't know. I, I'd say I'd say definitely advanced user. Yeah, but at the end of the day, still an end user. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It, it's a user. That 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 that's what the word means. You are the user. You are not necessarily developing. No, I the am the system administrator. You're using it. Ah, respect me. <laughs> but what is a Windows desktop power user? I mean, again, I've made the joke. Do you just click on the next buttons like very it, no, goodly, no, no. It's what? it's it's this it's a permissions group in the uh, Windows permission scheme. You can call someone a power user, and oh. they can right click and run as admin. That's that's where that's the term comes it. from. Oh. Yes. Yeah, that <laughs> is, that's, that's <laughs> sadder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Goverlay. Yep. Yes, new version of Goverlay. Uh, it's been a while since uh, the last big version update they've had a few point releases every now and then this one is uh, a mix of both there's a couple of new things with version not 6.4 and uh, the big one is very much um, it forces x11 mode by default on everything so if you're running something with goverlay like a video game uh, then it will be running in x wayland so x and all the things, so you can have your uh, Mango HUD, or you can have VK Base all to do the contra- uh, contrast adaptive sharpening, or you can have uh, Replay Sorcery, which lets you save like the fir- like the last however many seconds you have it set for at the press of a button. It's like, oh, that was really cool. You hit the button and it saves the last few seconds. And there was an issue with... Um, replay sorcery which there was a typo in the configuration file it was called video bitratey instead of video bitrate so <laughs> yes, apparently you don't want to sample the video bitratey matey <laughs> the uh, video bitratey <laughs> so uh for, for, for that global enablement of mango hud vk best cell etc etc you will need to provide some root credentials uh he's going to cram some stuff yes. in your etsy environment i would remark that you know slash etc environment dot d is there for that stuff so you can just put it in a Not file all this rose though <laughs> not not in all distros. It's pretty standard. Um, no, still, no, it, no, it's, it, it's probably pretty standard in that meme distro you run. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on Debian yeah. and Ubuntu as well. Yes, so environment yeah, and, D is enabled on those. Two. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that that's pretty common. Uh, but that's still, I mean even then that still needs your root password. Hopefully it doesn't require it forever. Hopefully we can figure out a way to like do enable that at like a user level because a lot of X servers don't even start as root. They just run as the uh, yeah. user when you start user that's launching it. Yep. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there is a workaround in the future. For no, now, I, it's going to need it. But one of the things I want to ask you: Do either of you use this? Because I got to admit that both the uh, Proton uh, config file and the Mango HUD config, to me, very humanly readable to the point to where I'm like, oh, I can just change anything that I need. It's to change a GUI for it. Yes, if you're comfortable. If you've been using Linux for a now, while, let, then let, you're let's, fine. Let's back this up, Pedro. <laughs> again, I'm asking you the question: Do either of you? use this no i haven't i haven't used it in a while because i set up um mango hud and okay. i set up the preferences for vk basalt but F- fsr is on all the things now so i just yeah, use I, fsr <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't use vk basalt i don't use replay sorcery um I, yeah M- mango mango hud it's it's packaged nice in fedora so you just need to install it from the repo and then it's all it's all enabled for and you. This is just a management GUI that yeah. if you want to customize what you display in Mango HUD, it'll let you do it via a very easy to use GUI. That mm. that that's the point of it. And of uh, replay sorcery, if you don't want to set that up in OBS, that's also very nice. Now, Jordan, I gotta ask you a question. What? What's the bandwidth of a station wagon full of pigeons? A band? I don't know. What, what, what's what's our, what's our breakdown per pigeon? I don't know, but you got to put them in boxes on CDRs. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this CD is, a, is not even USB. Yeah. Nope. No, no. The, 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 this this is pretty. This is pretty good. So you might have heard of a game called uh, A Little Big Adventure and its sequel, Little Big Adventure Two. Uh, it was. Um, it, it made it made some waves. Uh, but the news here is that uh, apparently the source code was not stored in any sort of traditional going Git a tree. bit deeper into the rabby bunny hole. <laughs> Reading yeah, off yeah. the page, people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so a bunch of it were, were kept in like boxes full of old CDs that the original developer had to have a friend of his drive out to him uh, so that he could put the uh, the engine code on GitHub. Um, I, I don't know. Briefcase full of CDs is like the Audi's equivalent of an Altoids tin full of micro SD cards. I, 
Yeah. The band, the bandwidth is fantastic. The latency sucks, but, um, the, the code is now available for your perusal complete with all the awful French in jokes and dumb little variable names. Um, they uh, have it split up into two repos per project. Uh, one for preservation, which just sort of uh, holds like the code it. as is. I like it. Uh, it's over. Shboing. What? Already? This Shboing. compression method is stupid, but it works. That's legit, though. That's all you yep. need to know. That's that's good code yeah. commenting. <laughs> so, software comment. Don't, mm. don't, don't uncomment this. If you uncomment this, the code breaks. Um, yeah, uh, but there's going to be one repo for g- the preservation of the code in its original state. Another one that is going to be taking pull requests. So uh, if you want to improve the game, if you are a fan of it, or if you want to add features, et cetera, et cetera, uh, they will be soliciting them via their GitHub. I'm very, very happy to see that. And, um, you know, the code was, like they said, it was never meant to be seen by anybody. And this is something I want to roll back on. I, I want to touch on this because I genuinely believe that is a big hurdle to a lot of people who would otherwise release their, I mean, there's like, you know, it's Lenny, right? He's like, don't yeah. tell people how I live. Uh it's cool, man. I mean, there's a the internet's full of assholes. I mean, every, eventually somebody's going to show up and be like, I was just dumb. I was just stupid. Fucking mute their ass, man. Uh, but yeah, feel safe releasing your stuff. I mean, I understand like some basic cleanup and all that, but don't be ashamed of your work. Yeah. It, it's all, it's uh, all iterative. Remove That's passwords, the- remove any kind of, uh, banking information, any kind if of you, really sensitive stuff. <laughs> if you are hard coding passwords in your code, you deserve whatever you get. I'm sorry. That's uh, enterprise software. Uh, yeah, you just video games maybe not so much, but enterprise software. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a Roblox story if you're asking me, man. But uh, <laughs> someone has already remade a little Big Adventure two. They've redid the engine in a uh, type JavaScript, mm. which exists. Which I'm sure they're like, "Welp, yoink!" And it's going to get really, really compatible. The game is still currently available on Steam if you want the assets. I think it's like three bucks, something like that, reasonably priced. Honestly, I've never heard of the game, but I'm glad that it's been open source because I know there was a fan base for it. And this is yeah. awesome for game preservation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And, and to Ven's point, don't be embarrassed about your old code quality. All of our code looks like shit. It's all dog shit. We I all mean, hate it. Exactly. If you're doing anything functional, it's supposed to be like pulling up something like, why well, do you know what the fuck this is? Like I did it. I'm responsible for this, but what else? Yeah. So I, I needed to solve the problem and it worked. So mm. fuck you. Yes. 38% of my bug reports come from Linux in the Linux community. Writes uh the game developer. The yeah. developer of Delta V, Rings of Saturn. Yeah. And uh weirdly enough, uh they put a positive spin on it because yes, the Five percent or six percent of uh, the people who bought my no, game hang on, hang on, found Pedro. and let's, reported. Let's, let's just, now, when you read read the headline and you're listening, that's just saying. Despite having just five point eight percent of sales, over thirty eight percent of bug reports from the Linux community. That sounds like it's about to be a negative thing. Because we've heard the negative thing many, many times in the past, Fo- followed uh, the by last that exact byline. Th- or preceded by that. Yes. <laughs> but this one is very much a positive spin because they clearly point out that, yes, uh, Linux users are providing not just more bug reports, but better bug reports. And they uncovered m- bugs that were affecting all the platforms and no one else had said anything up to that point. But Linux users was like, oh, yeah, no, that shouldn't happen. Blah, blah, blah. Here's how you do it. Here's how you get it fixed done and yes we've seen it time and time before this kind of spiel but spun in a negative light because oh yeah we sold like five linux copies and they generated like 90 bug reports and every single time i'm like at that you're complaining about that you're complaining about that well that's bullshit That is no, complete you, fucking bullshit. No, no. What, 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 what you're doing is you're telling me my software is broken when you should just consume fucko. But yeah. yeah. Um, so the, 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 the guy goes in, he's like, oh yeah, it's like having even 5% of my sales of 700 person people. It's like having your own 700 person QA team. Now I should say this comes with a massive caveat. I'm going to add this here. <laughs> if your plan is to release and use your Linux user base as your post facto QA, get ready to deal with people talking to you like an engineer on equal footing, because that is what you've done. You have said, I'm going to start using you guys as free work. So there, therefore you are now contributors to this project. 
and you can talk I to me as, as a peer bow before, before me, peasants. Me peasants. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that that shit's not gonna fly. It's a double edged sword. Also, also one thing to bring up. Okay, I I give you a curtsy. How about that? I'll, 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 I'll flash you a little underwear too, just just for fun. Um, but yeah, um, when when you say yeah, thirty eight percent of the bug reports are are cross platform bugs. This really only applies if you're using cross platform tools to develop your game proper. If you're going to be having separate middleware for the Linux version, the Mac version, etc. Yeah, your Linux bug reports are likely not going to be super relevant to all of the other general bugs uh, it, present in your game. But again, that, that is all about good software engineering. That's all about maintaining a limited number of dependencies, reducing your scope, et cetera, et cetera. So this, 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 this is not carte blanche to start releasing shit and say, oh, well, I don't have to worry about those Linux users. They'll no. just tell me what's I mean, wrong and fix my problem. You don't, you don't want to come in thinking about it. You think of it as a bonus soda. It's a fringe benefit. It's not something, it's not a guaranteed thing, but I mean, this is something you should expect. And to Jordan's, I do not try to bullshit the Linux crowd. I mean, that never ends well. We've seen uh, 10 God developers in Steam forums on more than one occasion that just did not handle that very well. I don't have any comment on that. I mean, you do you, but you know what? You're dealing with a user base that is like very, very much trained to submit bug reports and quality ones. This is just part of life, you know, <laughs> heading over and filing a pull request, uh, heading to GitHub doing that GitLab, whatever that that's just day in day out. I'm like, Oh, I found something. All right. Let's just even get a log together and put that in. And uh, that's how we roll. Do the same thing for games. But you know, yeah, we're going to be finding the bugs in the Linux stuff. However, we're also going to uncover bugs as a whole, as this developer pointed out. And it's like, yes. And some other stuff that I didn't, I mean, spot in QA and I'm like, Oh, that's neat. It's a I one for everyone. More. Now, things. <laughs> what do we think things are going to get a little, a little more sticky when, uh, when we got that uh, Vaseline proton layer on top of everything? Well, yeah, you see, you see, then the Valve is saying we're taking all the onus here for all those support tickets. I, I, I will mm -hmm. say Valve has done a pretty good job of going back to the dev and saying like, no, your shit's broken. You got to fix this. Proton mm. is running fine. You so, see this entire equation isn't ripe yet because yeah. up until like at, not even today, because I'll come back to a developer and be like, yo, your shit's broken. It's almost like fucking and yep. <laughs> what do I get? I don't fucking care. Not, it's not even until the Gabe gear starts shipping. It's that the Gabe gear starts shipping well received and starts shipping in volume and people start latching onto it. Then the developer is going to go, maybe we'll look into it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, it, it goes back to uh, if you want if you want to make sure that bugs you catch in one platform get squashed in all platforms, make sure all your shit is cross platform. Mm -hmm. Make sure it can compile to every yep. platform, and then all those Linux users submitting bugs will improve your Windows version and get you that mo very coveted return on investment. Oh man, the Linux community finally did something for me. Uh, uh. And Valve is very much taking advantage of that because oh yeah, we're making gaming a thing on linux and we have all of those linux users that do provide very good bug reports let's just make a github and have them do the qa for proton for us it's like oh hey <laughs> it's been working terribly well, well i mean it? you're talking about something that is <laughs> going to happen naturally like self-organizing entities that that's kind of what you're going to yeah, be doing proton with, db right? immediately sprung up around it's like oh okay <laughs> right yeah and, and i mean with, with with the knowledge that like v valve knows like oh yeah we released proton it's just go click and play we know exactly you fuckers are going to start digging around in this shit right like immediately yeah. and creating yeah. custom versions and adding more stuff to it that we never intended like uh the stl yeah. it's like okay all Again, right <laughs> i, I, I want to put the emphasis on this to me gets extremely interesting because people respond to money and if we or, you know, if it, it so happens to be that we do have this breakout thing with the Gabe Gear and it starts being a revenue generator, it's going to be interesting to watch how the industry and the attitudes are going to have to adopt around from, you know, my entire life, you know, 30 years of like, why would I bother fucking, 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 like, there's six of you playing games on Linux. <laughs> you know what? Here, here's something that kind of works. Pes oh, how dare you complain? It has problems. You even you paid the exact same as Windows. You, you're being toxic. You're being toxic. Mm -hmm. You cannot complain. Uh, but speaking, speaking, 
Speaking of the deck, you got, you, you got to imagine too that we're going to start getting like two classes of Proton users now, just like regular people who bought a Steam Deck, and then the actual Linux people who are like, "Ooh, I want Linux console!" Right? Like that 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 is yes. that is two completely different support segments. See, yes, that's going to have the a thing is, large overlap. Well, yeah, that that me diagram of that, um, the one that is going to make Steam. Uh, this is Game Gear as success is going to be the latter. It's going to be the ones that just want a fucking portable gaming console. And yeah, absolutely. it's going to be the bunch around. of people that made right. the Wii as popular as it was. It's the normies. <laughs> yep. And that, that is, that's going to be interesting because uh, Valve is seriously trying to crack something that nobody's cracked to date. I mean, yep. not legitimate. Like, yeah, the AO or whatever, but those are boutique things, man. I mean, this, this yep. is going to be mass market commercial, like, Yo, you can just go to the, yeah, price. You go to the Best Buy and buy one. <laughs> but one, one, one thing we will probably start seeing is those quality Linux bug reports are going to start becoming replaced by just regular user I don't bug reports think as that well. The average person, like, there's going to be something built in to the Steam Deck no, the, the, operating the, the, system. There, the there is, but it's like, I got a problem. It's going to do a crash. The, the average person is never going to fucking end up in GitHub, though. Here's what I'm saying, yeah. though. The, the average end user, the person you're talking about, never they're still not going to submit a bug report they don't no no but they but they but they will complain on twitter yes i mean this is going to be analogous to the steam forums it's going to be now (laughs) yeah that's it man because think when was the last time you reported a bug on your switch game uh if i if if someone would tell me where to go to submit those bugs i would (laughs) there you go (laughs) again do you think the average person is going to fucking know where to go nope nope it's going to be Maybe. the same story. That this is where it's going to be interesting to sit back and see how this plays out. No, Looking but now, now you now now we see we got the power users, so we're going to see how that collides. <laughs> Coming <laughs> up next, we're time to sneak around in a dark crypt, and I don't know, not stab vampires. Yay! Welcome back to the Chairquisition. We're alone in a dark crypt with the game Dark Crypt. Uh, yeah, don't know what the Chairquisition is. It's where we take a game, we take a look at it, we run it on three different Linux distributions on a wide panoply of hardware, and then we tell you what we think about it. We braid it on a scale of one to four lawn chairs, the most scientific. You know what I was thinking about thing. the other day, man? You know what I was thinking what? about the other day? Uh, uh, we, rightfully so, we get a lot of static uh, because we all have NVIDIA cards. But, yep. you know, there's no collusion there. Like, we... Never sit down and like, oh, let's only use NVIDIA. It's just, we all ended up buying NVIDIA cards. Isn't it going to be hilarious I, if it's this time next year when we all have Intel cards? I mean, I, 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 do, I do my best if I have the opportunity to right. test it on the AMD box. Like, right. yeah, I, I, have, I have a good mix of stuff. Pedro I, has a million laptops he can test it on. So we get a very, <laughs> we get a very comprehensive Intel performance profile. Uh, but anyways, Dark Crypt, it's developed by Daisy Games on the Godot engine. You can pick it up for about six bucks. Seven bucks. What is it? Dark Crypt is a turn-based puzzler with a horror theme. Sneak through an old crypt where ancient evil slumbers. Its shadow is corrupting the tomb, and the once buried bodies now haunt the halls. This evil must be sealed at all costs. And we gotta thank uh, Daisy Games for sending us some keys. So let's get into it. How about the Dibwans? Oh no. man, over here on the future of Linux operating systems, Debian 11. Uh, everything worked out of the box, man. This is on my Threadripper 1920X, uh, 32 gigajoules RAM, NVIDIA 2060, no problems whatsoever. Happy to report that picked up right out of the box with my Xbox One X wireless and the Bluetooth. I did notice a couple of things, though. I did. Uh, there's no resolution options when you're in full screen. I'm like, well, maybe I can fix that in windowed mode. You can in windowed mode, kind of, but only up to 1080p. It's like, huh, interesting design decision there. No. It looks, you know, it's hipster pixel. I mean, it does its thing. It's done well. I mean, it's cute enough. I mean, cute as you're going to get with the skulls and the stabby religious guy. Uh, the soundtrack, even though it's, it's definitely dark themed, it's very upbeat. Uh, it's got a surprisingly upbeat, which I definitely dug. Now let's talk about the fun, you know, like hack grid before this, uh, it's movement based puzzle game. Like we're all down with this. Uh, you hide from the baddies vision guns and then, you know, a uh, level shows up and you got to put all that in practice. Uh, then you can do a teleport real quick and then shit starts spinning. The baddies doing the vision cones and things start getting kind of, de- oh, what the fuck am I supposed to do to get that key? I'm sorry. That was my first playthrough experience. Um, Oh, look, you can skip yeah, levels. I, I skipped that one. I couldn't figure <laughs> that one out. Yeah. Man, same. <laughs> I, I ran into that. Like there was going to be any hope of me getting the ones after that. And there wasn't man. You know what? I took a good 30 minutes uh, into this game initially before I ran into like, 
fair enough, game. Fair enough, you are smarter than I. But I will come back. I will return to kind of defeat some levels and do a, a very lonesome victory lap. But yeah, it's well presented, well done, nice soundtrack, and it's a good puzzle game. I'm I'm just a sucker for one. And come on, I mean, it's six ninety nine. Please, I mean, insta buy, hundred percent on that. I would say for the fun, solid three out of the box. Uh, good job. Yeah, on Fedora 34 or 64 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, this game brought my system to a crawl. No, it ran fine. Um, yeah, it launches out of the box. There are very few options, um, but it does hold 60 at full screen, whatever 1080p scaled. Um, all the tutorial and extra text is actually toggleable. It's nice because you can decide what if you want the story or not, or if you want the tutorial or whatever. It's nice. It's not a game breaker. It's not a killer feature, but it's nice. Uh, reading the dual shot glyphs as text is certainly jarring, but hey, it picked up the <laughs> controller support. And yeah, the, the soundtrack is, I mean, it's there. I muted it after a while because I got a little annoyed with it. Fun wise movement puzzles. I definitely like this form of counting a lot more than raster prime. And if you were a fan of Hitman go, I think you probably will like this game or hate it depending on whether or not you want to be able to kill things like, holy shit. Like sometimes he's not looking at me. I can just pop his head off. Just let me, let me take out one. I just want to take out one. I don't need to take out more than one. Just, just one. I just fuck up, reach out and fuck up a zombie. Um, the game does a pretty good job of doling out the new challenges at a reasonable enough pace. And the design language is pretty robust. So as you go on, they give you more enemy types. Uh, they give you more stuff you can uh, engage with that will either eat your turn or not. And that determines a lot of the balance. It's pretty, it's pretty clever in the stuff that it show, uh, throws at you. And I mean, so you get 60 levels each with par ratings. So you can go for just beating them, whatever means necessary, or you could try to beat them all under par. If that's what gets your rocks off. It's not a bad amount of game for seven bucks. I didn't hate it. The three chairs. Oh, there we go. Three. Ah, blam. E. But yeah, it is, uh, it's a puzzle game. Come on. But over here on the um, Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it ran out of the box. It holds 144 FERPs at 2560 by 1440, as it should. Uh, the uh, the dual sense it also worked out of the box without any extra Steam input required. That was very nice. Uh, though the, uh, the game did have a bit of a brown moment when I turned on the controller while the game was already running. It just froze. I'm not sure if it was the game or Steam, since Steam also froze. So I, I'm going to chalk that one up as a Steam hiccup. But yeah, starting the game, I just restarted Steam and then started the game with the controller already on and it didn't exhibit any such issue. So, all right. Uh, compared to Hack Grid and uh, Dark Sheep, this is a much better looking game. L the visuals are very much there. And uh, unfortunately, the audio, not so much because I did very much like the audio in Raster Prime. It elicit elicited a very visceral reaction for me as it actually made the hair on my arm stand up. This one did no such thing. So that's unfortunate. But for the fun, once again, Daisy Games, uh, Martin is the name of the developer, uh, made a simple but brain-wracking puzzle game. It is, if you remember, like Jordan already mentioned, uh, Hit Mango, uh, this will feel somewhat similar. This is There's the first time more... I told the game to get fucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, oh, this, this one this one sucks. Was... This one wasn't the hardest. There's another one, uh, a few levels after this that that's very interesting. But the yeah, no, you have more open levels here than you do in Hit Mango. But that freedom also basically it's giving you more and more rope for you to hang yourself with, and you also very much get rated when you're done uh, jordan mentioned that too you get rated as to how well you did by how far above or below par you were in the level and there are m m several ways to solve most of the like the big open levels you can do them in multiple ways it's just a matter of finding out okay do you want to do it on par or do you want to do it your way it's all down to your brain and everything that you need to solve the puzzles is on screen all the time which is like the big thing for me at least when it comes to puzzle game design give people the chance to hang themselves give them everything that they need to 
enjoy your game. And for this price, it's very good considering others of its ilk. So three chairs. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Uh, dark, I keep wanting to call it Dark Fort because it's not been reading Dark Fort. <laughs> it's Dark Fort. It's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, full controller support. I, I dig games like this, especially like something's priced like this. This is something that you can buy. It can kick your ass. You can feel guilty for ignoring it, for kicking your ass for a few weeks and come back to it. Like for an extra round. And like Steven Sausage Roll. Or anything that looks deceptively simple that it never yes. <laughs> just wrecks you i have infinite respect for um now i think it would have been more entertaining uh, for me at least if there was a countdown timer on the each map <laughs> I, 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 I think i think it's a little worse because like you get to see the number of steps you did and like you should have been able to do this and this and like ah, oh that fuck. would have been an interesting mechanic maybe <laughs> something for the future to have like a challenge mode where you have a set amount of steps mm, that yeah. you have to because I, I was watching what Pedro was talking I'm like oh right and, yep and it seems like Pedro entered right into the oh now we do the kill die repeat method of hacking through this map I'm like back up yes bam, back <laughs> try, up, try, bam. Try, right. trial and error right. let's 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 try and map out all the safe spaces when we, we turn into yes. a very very simple minded organic AI until we yes. get yes. Welcome to Baba is you thinking of like, uh, <laughs> see that, that's just that uh, I, I don't care. Even Steven sausage roll dev has to walk up and like, Here, here's the fucking crown bitch. Um, that, I, yeah, no, Baba is a whole new level of fucky because you, you think you got it when you solve the first like 10 or so levels and then the game starts going, all right. Figure this one out. And then you go, oh, oh, shit. Bob, Bob is okay. Wall. Oh, oh, so we're playing it this way. Yeah. Exactly. I was watching somebody much later in the game playing through. I was streaming on Twitch and I saw one of the, I don't even remember what it was. I just, my brain went, oh, get fucked. No, uh, I would right. not. I don't care. Loaded gun to my head a million years on an island. I would never put that one together, but. There they That's, are. That's it's it's the mark of a good puzzle game. It really is, makes man. you really confirms how mm -hmm. stupid you actually are. All right. Well, coming up next, we got more feedback about bug reports. Oh no! And sexy decks. Ooh. It's the end. Yes, the Halloween special. Which, if you ask me, nothing was special about this. But then again, I'm a bit special, so who knows? What am I on about? More. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, if you have an inkling of what I may be on about, maybe you should go to lacecapecast.com, hit the contact button, and tell us what it is exactly that I'm on about, because I have no idea. That's, uh... You seem to yeah, be on probably drugs. the best idea. <laughs> he's doing the best he can, man, and Pedro's, like, mildly sidetracked, man. You can see him, though. He's struggling. He's trying to power through it. It's yeah. like he's walking and chewing gum, man. <laughs> No, I, I was going to say something, and then my phone flashed out the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh, ADD. All right, okay. Yep. <laughs> so if you want to get in touch with us, that's kind of brilliant. We live off of your feedback, and there's a good chance we'll read it. As long as it's semi-coherent and you stuck something together, feel free to drop us a comment on the YouTubes or on Even Patreon if it isn't post. coherent. You know what? I you gotta you gotta show your work. You gotta put some effort into it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we've we've read some grammatical travesties though. Oh, like, that's my favorite. But what I'm saying, yeah. man, I don't. We don't don't bring that fucking amateur grade school level troll bullshit up in our house. We've been doing this too long. You know? Bring your A game. You know? Put some thought into it. It'll ABC get through. game. Yeah, Clever good. trolling will get you a long way. Yes, it will. <laughs> now, um, very timely, this came in when we were talking about uh, beta testing and Steam hiring people to uh, mm -hmm. do the QA and test their dicks. And if you're going to be doing dick test, uh, you might run into some other uh, things that yeah. you might not expect. The original Chris yeah. writes, what? <laughs> he says, millions comment about how the testers are going to have to play adult games, Lenny Face. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely <laughs> surprised that showed up in Shadbot. They didn't. Same. Yeah, like it didn't, it didn't fuck it up. Bra bra bravo, empty. Good, good job. You know, you know, and we don't want to be taking feedbacks from any fake Chris's, any knockoff Chris's. We want the original, Chris. the original Chris, the yeah. original Chris. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, there's a lot of uh, hentai and just generally well, like, porny games on Steam. <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say, I wonder how well the touchpads work with like the groping games with the force feedback. I Probably don't know. better. <laughs> 
Depending on the haptic feedback. Well, like that that's the thing. They're ra- they're rating the games based on how functional they are with the controller. So at some point you have to put in some thought to how one might use a controller for this sort of game. I don't know. <laughs> the uh I I completely forgot about that. And we you all see it too, man. Like, listen, I'm not knocking on anybody. If that if that's the type of games you like playing, man, go for it. But I mean, we've seen it like sorting by new releases. You're like, holy fuck, really? Really? That, <laughs> yeah. Huh. Can't put there's that on a lot YouTube. of them recently. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no shortage of um like the dime a dozen pornographic games on Linux. And I, I guess it's gonna be somebody's <laughs> job, man. It's it's either gonna be the worst part of someone's day or the best part of someone's you day. You know what? They might end up with like oh <gasps> Yes. That, that, that's that's where we lock Jethro <laughs> to review the adult games. Don't open that door. That, Don't go anywhere that, near that. That's what Don't I'm saying. The is the strategy to give that person their own office that with a closed door or not to? Which What's the safe <laughs> one? No, on no, that? you just give that uh, job to someone who's working from home because no, you know no, exactly what's going to happen. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's one of those hermetically sealed like Dick Cheney safes that like, <laughs> yeah, just completely seal the guy in. Just <laughs> Don't, don't even. Uh, All right. Uh, I'm next. Uh, reporting bugs. Also very timely since that's what we kind of talked about this week. But that post was on Reddit earlier this week. And it kind of makes sense. It comes from Biko. He was in chat earlier. Uh, it's like they don't. He wrote in. They also don't accept bugs as a given. Seriously. The average user nowadays seems to be used to a lot of pain. Thanks to Android apps. Maybe before they start jumping the hoops to report a bug at all. Now, I'm going to take a different path on that. As uh, I was just mentioning Jordan, and once the last time he posted a bug report for a Switch game, what the fuck would you even go to? Like, yeah, for mm-hmm. Windows? Like, <laughs> le- le- legitimately, I mean, where can you go? Like, typically, maybe if you're lucky, they have a forum area dedicated on the steam store for reporting yeah, bugs. M- maybe if they have like a customer support email you might be able to get something through that what do you uh, okay this but, is, but I, you know oh okay go on 100 legitimate question windows bugs you run into a crash how, how do you do you get like an error because i just yeah yeah you, you you get the this yes. program has crashed would you like to send an error report to microsoft and people inevitably click no because they're like i don't know what the hell i'm sending to microsoft does that output anything useful? I'm sure to the Windows to system engineers no. it does. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, would it be useful to be like, this is the error it generated to the developer? And they're like, yeah, that's nice. It's cute. M- maybe. Uh, d- depends on it how they just. Uh, oh, it depends a, on how the app ID crashed again. So here's just what I'm asking. Yeah, is there like the equivalent of GDB for Windows? No. No. <laughs> Not at that level. No. no there are no. other. Um, <laughs> but, but but like even even then there's no like there's no like d message or like var log whatever that's easily accessible and extractable on, under under windows and to, okay, to, to not Nico's to bring point, it up but i'm about to bring it up that's there's something i system report here's something i got when we were watching uh not the, easily the linus show not that not this linus the screechy one but the uh the, that one's one part of the show when i was murdering things in my kitchen apparently uh they were his, I I believe it was a Linus. He said, uh, talking about some errors, he's like, there was no way for me to uh, show what was happening because the system shut down. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, very log. I mean, it everything that that computer's done is logged in Linux. It's there, man. Because there seemed to be a lot of like, well, the com- it just did it by itself. Like, that's not how a computer works. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, no, I just want to. But uh, I, there's there's no GUI to look at the var logs. Yeah, it's again, it's not accessible if you go into like event viewer and shit. And even then, those logs are not very useful. Mm. Uh, I, I, I will say though, to Becco's point, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of like battered and broken end users in Windows land that will just tolerate software breakage because that's part of the that's mm. part of the lifestyle, right? Mm. Um, and to the point of the Android apps. Uh, how do you people report bugs? Oh, you go to the app store and you write a comment or you leave a yeah. one star review. That's bound to get their attention. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we, here's the thing though. We don't want them to do that on steam because we've fucking seen what happens when steam becomes your primary <laughs> support forum. It's, it's no good. It's not good for the kids. Uh, uh, how dare you tell Epic that? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> how, how, how dare I, Tim? Ladies Jim and gentlemen. Gentlemen. Why create our own community when the Steam community works just fine? <laughs> on, that, on that glorious, glorious cheap bombshell. We're going to go news and bounce out of here. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of online. I, I try to be like that. Just at Vin Stone on Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter account, we have a federated Mastodon timeline at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin there. Always just send in the uh, contact form. We'll get it. It'll make sure it gets to the right person. Uh, leave us a note on Patreon or hop into our Discord and say hey. And uh, I'll say hey back. I'm Jordan Spung. If you want to find out what I'm doing, check Varlog Jordan on your system. If that file is actually <laughs> there. Hi, how's it going? Uh, if you if, if it's not on your system, you can check me out on uh, Twitter at Burning Fool or on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. I don't know if you hit me up on Twitter and you say, hey, I might reply with, uh, I'm going to fuck you softly. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, no. Just um, try to argue with him. It'll get him going. <laughs> argue about fucking yes. him hard. That'll, that'll get him real good. That would be certainly a discussion that a lot more people would be paying attention, and I'm not entirely sure I want that kind of attention. So, yeah, find me on Twitter. By all means, it's at unaccounted for F-O-U-R. So, yeah, just uh, poke me on there, and I might poke you back. <laughs> There's no narrative here. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this, 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 this is like popping a zit of content. Like, we are just spray and pray, baby. A it's content 2.0. Oh, uh, no, it's content 3 with blockchain. we got to thank our party patrons, our lovely advisors, Omega and Artharan, our executive producers, Aldia, Sparbram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer 7, and Kohaku, and our Chicago Kicks Ass, Little Nicky Fans, Darkwing, Abstraction. And the Sea Monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, and Strider, The Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, uh, System T, Craig H, Renee, Leonardo, System D, Chrissy, Kim, CG, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen, Dirty Dean, Back, Game Matron, and Dodger. And a variable tsunami. Look at these All fuckos. All the chairlings like Rosmawana <coughs> and Steve B and Oil of Hope and Jim and of course the fuck wall with Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux <coughs> Guru, Aldius, Noctilus, You've heard John, of Red Shift, you've heard of Blue Shift, that Game was Frank Tron. Shift. He's <laughs> gone Frank flat. Shifted. Gone with the bones. <laughs> or He's gone people. with a boner. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>